Hey there, welcome to my channel. I'm May and I just talk about the things I like. Today I wanted to talk about the children's TV show Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. If you don't know anything about the show, I recommend listening to the theme song because it sums up the concept of the show, but I also recommend watching the show to get the full in-depth story and to support all the staff members that work hard to make the show happen. To those who do know about the series or have seen it personally, we all know that the show has some issues, but this isn't a video about why I think Miraculous needs to do better. It's a six part redesign and rewrite series, though I like to treat it as an AU or fan fiction. Since this is my AU, I want to briefly mention some of the changes I would made before getting into the redesigns. For starters, I decided to age up the characters. I'm just tired of 14 year olds having superpowers and being somewhat responsible for them. But I also wanted a coming of age type story where the characters are starting adulthood in challenging ways. With that being said, the characters like Marinette and her classmates are 18 and the story will take place during their four years of college. The characters that will be attending the same college would be Marinette, Adrian, Nino, Alia, Chloe, and Lila. All the other characters attend a different school. But without further ado, let's start with Marinette's redesign. So with Marinette's design, I had a bit of trouble figuring out an outfit that I believe would best suit her. I had two original concepts, but I had a huge problem with both of them. With the first outfit, I wanted to give Marinette a cute style where she has a dress and a long sleeved look. I'm not sure what that style is called, but the color scheme was absolutely horrendous. The hot pink dress with the white polka dots, mm -mm, no. That was like the worst part of the design. Luckily, I came to the realization that I needed to try again and come up with a different concept. But this time, I tried to stay somewhat true to Marinette's original color scheme. So in the second original concept, I gave her a lighter pink sundress with a mesh polka dot undershirt, which I think is way better than the first option, but it wasn't enough. I felt like the Marinette that I wanted to represent had more of a sweet and outgoing vibe to her. So this is how I came up with my final product. So in my final concept, I wanted to keep pink in her color scheme somewhere for sure, but I also wanted everything to go together. I decided to give Marinette an over the shoulder pavement black shirt with white polka dots and a pink skirt. She also wears tights and brown flats with hot pink bows that have polka dots on them inspired by Minnie Mouse. She also wears a silver bracelet on her left hand and wears her hair down like she does in Heart Hunter and Cat Blanc. I'm going to briefly talk about Marinette's creepy behavior in this section. For those who have watched Miraculous, I'm sure we can agree that Marinette can get overboard with her crush on Adrian. You know what? I wouldn't even call Marinette's feelings for Adrian love. It's a straight up obsession. I hate the way that her stalking is written off as something that is a part of her personality, which is the quirky anime girl that also wants their crush to notice them. No! Why? Her possessiveness towards Adrian, who isn't even her boyfriend, is beyond unacceptable. The fact that she literally keeps tabs on him by knowing when he does photo shoots, when he gets home, when he has practice. Not to mention when she abused her power to break into his home and did all that weird, creepy, admiring business in his bedroom. You know what, I'm surprised Adrian hasn't seen her hiding in a bush somewhere staring at him menacingly. I also don't like that her friends encourage it. Even Kagami, Kagami of all people was okay with this behavior. Why? Although I will say Marinette's behavior has gotten better in season 4 compared to the other seasons, but she still does some weird things. In my version of Marinette, she is a bit energetic, clumsy, and outgoing. She is also a hopeless romantic, but not how it is in the show. She loves romance and hopes to fall in love with someone who will love everything about her, even her flaws. 
She is also creative and imaginative and is also willing to comfort a friend even if all she has to do is just be there. Since Marina doesn't really have a backstory other than just being a normal girl in a normal life, I wanted to give her more backstory about her childhood and how she came to who she is today. So this is what I came up with. As a child, Marinette has always been insecure. She has always felt insecure about her personality and even in her relationships. In her elementary school years, she was extremely outgoing and energetic, but the other kids didn't see it that way and would call her annoying and avoid her. Because of that, Marinette would start changing her personality around the other kids and hope to fit in. Though these attempts would not work, this would cause Marinette to be more reserved shy and soft-spoken. So instead of playing, Marinette would decide to start drawing in the classroom. Little did she know that she had a talent for drawing, especially drawing clothing. But this would not be the end of Marinette's loneliness. Marinette did manage to make a friend, a girl who casually saw Marinette's drawings and always gave her compliments. This girl was Chloe Bourgeois. I know what you might be thinking, why Chloe and not Alia? This is going to be explained in Chloe's redesign video, so stay tuned for that. Even though Marinette wasn't truly herself around Chloe, she was thankful that someone wanted to be around her. She would also be afraid to make new friendships and believe that Chloe was all she needed. Marinette also had a fear of messing up so badly around Chloe that it would cost their friendship, making Marinette a quiet follower of Chloe. This friendship would continue up until their first year of high school. In Marinette's class, she meets another girl named Alia Cesare. At first, Marinette was scared to open up, but Alia gave Marinette a sense of security and the freedom to just be herself. She would even show Alia her drawings of clothing designs that she came up with. Through this friendship, Marinette learns that it's okay to be herself and tries to do things she truly loves and enjoys. She still struggles to be confident about who she truly is. It doesn't help that she lost Chloe as a friend in the process of that and that Chloe started to bully her relentlessly. Alongside Alia, Marinette would make new friends, Alex, Milan, Rose, and Julika. Marinette will also realize that she wanted to help people feel confident in themselves just like how her friends helped her. While trying to find ways to help people feel confident in themselves, Marina would always find herself designing different types of clothing. Marina's dream is to one day become a fashion designer and have her own clothing company that will cater to every person and every size. Since in my AU the characters are in college, Marina will be majoring in fashion design, but occasionally she will make her own clothing as practice. Now let's be honest, the recognition of Marinette's Chinese heritage is not really present in the show. I would love to see Marinette learn more about her culture if we do get that in the future, but all we get that is close to Marinette learning about her culture is Miraculous World Shanghai. And I feel like we still didn't get to know much about Marinette and her family. So in my AU, I want Marinette to be able to speak Mandarin even if it's not that much. I also want Sabine to teach Marinette about their culture and tell stories about her life growing up in China. And maybe instead of Marinette going to Shanghai by herself to go pursue her love interest, she actually goes on a family trip that her parents worked so hard to save money for. The first thing I wanted to establish in Ladybug's design is that she will look completely different from her civilian form. But nevertheless, I struggled a lot with her design. This was the first concept out of many. I wanted to add more ladybug aspects to the design so that the suit wouldn't have a lot more variety. But now looking back at it, it looks like a child made it, which isn't bad, but it feels like elementary school Marinette would definitely wear this. The colors were a genuine mess and the spots on the suit, yeah. I know this was just a concept and this was just me messing around and just sketching, but it, it looks terrible. Even though I went through a lot of concepts, I believe I finally brought something together for Ladybug's design. So with Ladybug's suit, I wanted to add more colors to the scheme and have fewer spots. 
One, because I feel like having all those spots would make her suit too busy. And two, I wanted Ladybug to have a grown up feel to her. At some point, I wanted Ladybugs to have wings because Ladybugs have wings. But I just settled down with a mesh vibrant pink cape because personally, I feel like wings would just be too much, at least for this suit. I also gave Ladybug a headband inspired by Scarabella's design. And the last thing I wanted to mention, I did make some changes to Ladybug's hair. Marinette and Ladybug already have physical similarities, so I wanted to at least change Ladybug's hair color, style, and length so that it's only a bit believable if Marinette was Ladybug. When Marinette is Ladybug, I want her to be a lot more clumsy and prone to making mistakes, especially in her beginning stage as a hero. But once Ladybug gets a hang of her role, she is a much more responsible and serious, though she is able to take a joke. She is a bit more organized than her partner, but always treats him as an equal and relies on him more than the other superheroes. Before talking about Ladybug's powers, I wanted to bring up the power system in Miraculous real fast. Because sometimes the powers of the Miraculous is, is it Miraculous? Is it Miraculi? I'm just gonna say Miraculous. The Miraculous just contradict each other. I always hated the fact that Ladybug and Cat Noir's powers are limited despite being the two most powerful Miraculous in the mother box. And even just the concept of once you use your special power, you only have five minutes left until you de-transform is interesting. But here's the real question. Does that only apply to the heroes? I'm only saying that because I feel like with some of the other Miraculous holders, like Hawk Moth for example, he akumatizes a victim, five minutes will pass, and he's still in costume like there is absolutely nothing wrong. So does that rule not apply to him because he's a villain or is that just a continuity error? Another thing I also realized is that Kwame's need to be fed to get energy. I don't think Gabriel feeds Nuru at all. So where does Nuru get all that energy anyway? Nor do we see that with Dusu, even when the Peacock Miraculous gets fixed. Everyone else literally has to feed their Kwame to give them energy, but Nuru and Dusu just get free passes. With that being said, I came up with my own power system, so stick towards the end of the video to hear that. But for our main duo, I'm giving Cat Noir and Ladybug unlimited use of their powers, but after using their powers, they only have a certain amount of time before they can use them again. So it isn't as easy to discover the secret identity of Ladybug or Cat Noir. But since this is Ladybug's redesign, I'm going to briefly talk about the powers I changed. I'm going to get rid of her miraculous Ladybug power because I feel like it's an unfair advantage that Ladybug has this power and Cat Noir has nothing relating to this power despite them being equals. So instead, she only has the Lucky Charm and the ability to purify Akumas. With her Lucky Charm, she will still have to use the object to help save the day if she has trouble finding a solution. But she can also call on her Lucky Charm to bring her an object that she needs. Just like the Magical Charms in Season 4. Here is the final product of both Marinette and Ladybug. I had a really fun time drawing and coming up with both concepts even if it felt like a train wreck sometimes, but I can't wait to explore both Marinette and Ladybug in the rewrite video and talk about what I've come up with for them in my AU. But with these two out of the way, let's move on to Alia Cesare. I'm going to be completely honest, I struggled with Alia's design as well. I wanted to stay true to her original color scheme, but I didn't realize that the orange I chose was too close to her skin tone. For my first concept, you can really see that based on the color of her shirt and how I styled it. Also, she looks like she was ready to go cosplay as Phineas from Phineas and Ferb, so I knew I definitely needed to give her a change. So I came up with a second concept. I wanted to give her a journalist type vibe, but I realized that it just didn't really fit the Alia I wanted to come up with. Two things were very important to me in Alia's design. One, give her a chill but cute vibe. And two, give her some better shoes. When I was looking up a good reference for Alia, I noticed how atrocious her shoes were. Wh why? Why does it look like that? 
You literally have a fashion designer for a friend and she's still making you walk around like that. But I think her final concept really suits the Alia I want to portray. So I decided to give Alia a light pink over the shoulder, sweatshirt dress, and a burgundy tank top that she wears underneath it. I also gave her gray sneakers and pink socks, because I can, and because I think pink and red suit her skin tone. I also gave her a high ponytail and kept her ombre reddish orange hair. For Alia's personality, I'm going to make her a bit more reliable compared to her TV show personality, especially when it comes to Marinette's secret about Adrian. I just hate how everyone in Marinette's school knows and we haven't seen Alia deny it, especially in the season 4 episode Gabriel Aggressed. And while we're on the topic of reliability, no, I am not going to get upset about Alia telling Nino that she was Rena Furtive because I feel like she was low-key justified in that, but I can talk about that in a different video. Anyways, I also want Alia to have a caring nature, especially since she is an older sister. Alia just wants what's best for her and people around her, but she's also not afraid to speak up for herself or others in need. And of course, she's extremely honest no matter how hard the truth may be. Alia's story starts in her middle school years. During Alia's time in middle school, she befriended two girls in her class and they all became very close. They would always spend time together outside of school by having sleepovers, going shopping, and doing things that friends do. Although things weren't really picture perfect, there were always absurd rumors spreading around about Alia that would fill the halls of the school. Little did Alia know, the two friends she considered close were the cause of this. Alia would continue to hang out with these girls up until her last year of middle school. While trying to find her friends, she overhears them talking about her secrets to other students and even making false claims about her. Alia then confronts these girls and they finally admit that it was them spreading all these rumors. Alia eventually stopped hanging out with those girls, even going as far as to isolate herself from the other students. The rumors sadly didn't stop there, but Alia was glad to be moving schools the next year. This gave Alia a sense of hope to start over fresh. She also made a vow to help others in situations like her. In her first year of high school, she meets the timid Marinette. Although she was hesitant to tell her personal things at first, she eventually opens up and feels completely safe around Marinette. Although Alia was hesitant to tell her personal things at first, she eventually opens up and feels completely safe around Marinette. She even tells Marinette about her time in middle school and how she wants to show the world that there are truths and lies to the rumors that are spread. Marinette then brings up the idea of Alia joining the newspaper club at their school. Alia takes this advice and joins the club where she started to write articles with reliable sources about the school. She even takes it a step further and creates a blog dedicated to her daily life and her past, which gets extremely popular. For her remaining high school years, she befriends the other girls just like Marinette and also meets Nino, although they don't get together until their last year of high school. Since she is attending the same university as Marinette and the other characters, Alia majors in journalism and minors in broadcasting. And as for the Lady Blog, Alia will start it after Ladybug's first showing. Now for Rena Rouge's design, I don't have any early concepts because I could not figure out what I wanted to make different from her original design. And I'm not going to lie, I love Rena Rouge's original design. At first, I was just going to leave it alone and call it a day, but luckily, I found the motivation to try again, and I think I got it. So for Rena Rouge's new suit, I just made a few changes. Starting with her hair, I decided to dish the nine-tail hairstyle and just made her hair a bit longer and made it tied at the bottom to give more of a tail look to it. And I gave her a hard cut on her suit. And I left the cape pretty much the way it is, except that it starts near her collarbone. It doesn't go over her suit like a jacket in her original design. And I gave her two chains that go across her waist for the purpose of having some place to hold her weapon when she is not using it. And lastly, I changed how the fox ears looked and made them more fox-like. Although there's nothing wrong with the original concept, I just like the shorter ears on her better. 
When it comes to Rena Rouge's powers, I wanted to keep it the same as how her powers are represented in the show. But I wanted to give the other superheroes outside of Ladybug and Cat Noir roles so that they can help the duo fight akumatized villains. I like the idea of Rena Rouge becoming an undercover spy that helps keep watch of Shadow Moth in season 4, but I'm going to give her more to do in my AU. So, when Alia is given her miraculous for the first time, she is shown to be very observant and can be extremely sneaky. She is able to follow and make plans quickly and shows a lot of loyalty towards her team. Because of this, she is able to keep her miraculous when Marinette is guardian. Reno Rouge's role is to keep watch and also help by using illusions behind the scene. She will also help investigate Hawk Moth's identity and report to Ladybug on her findings. On her investigation missions, she will mostly go solo or go with Carapace and Queen Bee if needed. She does not have to go into hiding because in my rewrite, the events of season 3's finale does not happen, though I might replace it with another situation. This is my final concept for Alia Césaire and Rena Rouge. I had a lot of fun redesigning both of them, even though I almost gave up and called it a day. I'm really happy how things turned out. I feel like there's a lot more I can do with both Alia and Rena Rouge, but I'm going to leave that for a later video. As promised, I wanted to explain the power system for Miraculous I came up with. For starters, let me explain the rules. Rule number one, there is a time limit associated with the user's special power, but it does not make them detransform. So if someone used their special power, they don't have 5 minutes left until they detransform. If the Miraculous is on a higher level in the system, they will only have to wait a short amount of time before they can use their power again. If the Miraculous is on a lower level in the power system, the user will have to wait a longer amount of time to use their power again. Rule number 2. The only way a Miraculous user can detransform is by saying their respective phrase or if the Miraculous is taken off. This includes anyone outside of the user taking it by force. And lastly, rule number 3. Kwamis do not need to be recharged or fed, but just like in the show, you can feed them ingredients for a special power-up. With the rules out of the way, we can finally get into the power system. I made a tier list to help me visualize the different levels of the Miraculous, the link will also be in the description. This list goes from what is the most powerful Miraculous to the least powerful Miraculous in the power system, and the tiers will act as levels. Starting in the first level, I have the two most powerful Miraculous, the Cat and the Ladybug. Since these are the most powerful Miraculous, as I stated before, the Cat and Ladybug Miraculous carry unlimited use of their powers, but after using their special powers, they will have to wait a couple of minutes before using them again, maybe 10 minutes before. They also have no limits on their powers, and any object made or destroyed will remain even after Marinette and Adrian detransform. In the second level, there are multiple Miraculous. This level contains the fox, rabbit, butterfly, peacock, dragon, mouse, snake, and turtle Miraculous. These Miraculous are second in power. These users also have unlimited use of their powers, but they have to wait 30 minutes to use their powers again, and they only have some limitations to their powers. These powers work the same way as they do in the show. In the third level, I have the bee, tiger, monkey, and horse miraculous. The users do have limitations to their powers, but they have to wait an hour to use their power again. These powers still work in the same way as the show. And in the final level, we have the ox, goat, pig, dog, and rooster miraculous. I want to talk about my thoughts on these ones since they are new, and maybe explaining my thoughts could help reason why they are so low in the system. I feel like out of all the new miraculous powers we've seen in season 4, these ones were the least useful in my opinion. The ox's power is resistance, which gives the user immunity toward other abilities. It's a good power to have, but in reality, how does this power help others? Unless there is more to the Ox's power that we have yet to learn, it's not helpful unless you are the one using it. The Goat Miraculous is the bootleg version of the Ladybug Miraculous. The Goat's power is Genesis, which gives the user the ability to create an object. I was really excited to find out what the Goat Miraculous would do, 
but it ends up being so similar to one of the most powerful Miraculous. So I came up with a different version of the Goat Miraculous, although it's pretty mediocre. In my new version of the Goat Miraculous, the user's power grants them the ability to bring paranoia or fear onto their opponent with a single tap, but this power only works for a short amount of time. I just thought about what goats do, and fear was the main thing I could think of. Anyways, the pig miraculous. The pig's power, gift, grants the user the ability to show their opponents their heart's desire. I don't really have a problem with it, but there are only rare cases I feel like this power could be used. The dog miraculous in my opinion isn't really needed. The power of the dog miraculous is fetch, which grants the user the power to fetch and receive an item that the ball has touched. In the season 4 finale, it was used to fetch the akumatized object. Even though all Ladybug needed to do was go back in time and see where the akuma landed, then go back into her original timeline and easily take the akumatized victim's object. That's it. It wasn't like the kid was fighting to keep his object away from everyone, because no one knew where it was. Hence why everything went downhill the way it did. And lastly, the Rooster Miraculous. The rooster's power, Sublimation, grants the user the ability to gain any power they desire. Miraculous would be over if they used the rooster Miraculous in the beginning. Now this is a good power, but at the same time, it's a cheat. And also, it can solve all of Gabriel's problems. Because if you can gain any type of power, all Gabriel would need is the power to bring back his dead wife. But only if that's possible. Overall, I just think these new powers aren't as useful as they seem. But continuing on with my power system, these powers are limited and cannot be expanded on. These miraculous are only used if it is needed for the battle. These powers take a day to recharge after using their special abilities, even if the user were to detransform and transform again. So this concludes the first part of this redesigned series. It was really fun coming up with Alia and Marinette's concept and also creating a power system to help fit the story I want to tell. If you're still watching from this point, I want to personally thank you for just taking the time to listen to my thoughts. It's very much appreciated. I also want to hear your thoughts, so be sure to comment down below. The second part of this six part series is in the works, so hopefully I can get it out soon. If you are interested in this series, be sure to come back. You can get updates from my channel by subscribing and hitting the bell, or from my Instagram. The art from this video will also be posted on my Instagram, the link will be in the description. But that's all I have for today. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you soon.